Hello and welcome to this HOG4 tutorial which takes a look at how to build a basic fixture in the Fixture Builder. If a fixture type is not included in the latest HOG4 fixture library on your console, then before attempting to build a fixture yourself, check the FTP fixture downloader site in case the required fixture has already been built by high-end systems since the last software release. The process of downloading these fixture library files and importing them into the console is explained in the previous tutorial. Remember, you can also access the HOG library request form via any of the HOG4 product pages on the high-end systems website. To open the fixture builder, first open the fixture window and then press the fixture builder button followed by OK. It can be helpful to view how a similar fixture has been built before starting to build your own. To do this, you must have first added a fixture of that type to your show, and then press Copy From to select the existing type. You can give this new custom type a name and either edit it directly or refer back to it by selecting it from this drop-down menu. Please note that it is not possible to have all the unique elements of a library created by high-end systems when using the fixture builder. For example, virtual intensities. Even if you start the build process by copying from an existing fixture, the virtual intensity functionality will be removed when you build the type. This tutorial will look at the steps required to build a fixture from scratch, one channel at a time. First of all, press Create New and give your fixture a name, plus the author and any notes if you wish. Then specify how many DMX channels the fixture has, in this case, 12. The majority of fixtures have just a single patch point, but if your fixture has an external dimmer, then you would add a second patch point, typically at channel 2. For this example though, we need just a single patch point, and so this can be easily removed. Channel 1 from the DMX chart is now being displayed on the screen. Select the function cell for channel 1, and press set or double click. Press the intensity tab, and select intensity from the list. Within the fixture builder, all lists are now sorted alphabetically. The function will become the parameter name when you are programming. Press enter or double click to close the window. To quickly explain what feature is, if you had a gobo rotation function for example, then you might have an index feature and a rotation feature, which you would select from the encoder box when programming. For basic functions such as intensity, there are no different features to choose from, and so this automatically fills with intensity for you. Now enter the range of DMX values for this parameter. Either type this in, or select 0 through 255 from the drop-down list and press enter. Finally, you must assign real-world values to this function. The real-world values are the actual values which you will see displayed on the console when you adjust the parameter. Select 0 through 100% from the drop-down list, followed by Enter. One tip for building your own fixtures would be to press the Build Type button after completing a channel. If you receive the Custom Type Built Successfully box, then you know your entries for this channel are in the correct format. This also allows you to now reselect another fixture from the drop-down list, perhaps to check how to configure your next channel. The next six channels from the DMX chart are now being displayed on the screen. The first four are 16-bit, so pan and tilt have coarse and fine, and therefore use two channels each. There is also the added feature of pan and tilt rotation, which is becoming a common feature of some fixtures. To combine two channels to create a single 16-bit channel, select the cell for a channel and type 2 slash 3. They do not need to be consecutive channels to combine them as a 16-bit channel. Once combined, you can choose to delete the extra DMX entry for each channel if it's not required, which simplifies the look of the fixture. Now you can assign the functions of pan and tilt to each channel, and the feature will default to being pan and tilt also. Once again, enter the range of DMX values. For a 16-bit channel, the range would be 0 through 65,535, 
and you can assign this to both pan and tilt at the same time by selecting both cells, pressing set and selecting that range from the drop down list, followed by enter. The DMX chart shows a maximum range of pan of 660 degrees. Enter the real world value as minus 330 through 330 and press enter. This will ensure that zero degrees is in the middle of the DMX range. Repeat the same process for tilt with real world values of minus 150 through 150 degrees. To configure the pan and tilt rotation channels, we need to add two new DMX entries for each channel. To add a DMX entry, select any cell within a channel and press the new DMX entry button. Once again, select pan and tilt from the function list, but this time change the feature to be rotation for all entries. As per the DMX chart, assign the range of DMX values and the associated real world values for each entry. The final thing we need to do is link the standard pan channel and the pan rotation channel together. This is done by adding a new DMX entry to each channel. On the main 16-bit pan channel, set the new entry to pan rotation, but in the DMX value cell, select no value from the list. On the pan rotation channel, set the new entry to just pan, but again enter no value into the DMX value cell. There is no need to assign real world values to either of these entries. Repeat the same process for the tilt channels and then again check that everything has been entered correctly by pressing build type. The next three channels are much more straightforward and consist of cyan, magenta and yellow. Set each channel to the correct function within the color tab. The feature will default to variable. Since the DMX chart shows that 0 is full color and 255 is no color, then the DMX value should be reversed. So enter 255 through 0 for each of the three channels. The real world values are simply 0 through 100%. Next is a gobo channel which has six slots and then a clockwise and anti-clockwise spin feature also. An entry for zero RPM will be required, so add an extra eight DMX entries to the channel. Configure the function of all nine entries as Gobo under the Beam tab. Then the first six should be left with the default feature of slots and the other three should be set to spin. Now assign the DMX values to each entry. If the fixture only supported snapping between gobos, then a single DMX value can be entered for each slot. However, in this example, we will assume that the gobos can scroll from one to the next, therefore the full range should be entered. When it comes to the real world values, select the most appropriate name from the predetermined list. For each slot, you should also enter an offset value of minus 50 through 50%. All slots must have the same offset applied, and in real terms, the offset will be displayed on the encoder wheel to show what proportion of the gobo is currently in view as you transition from one to the next. Many fixtures do not support scrolling backwards from the open position, or scrolling forwards from the final gobo, and this can be accommodated in the fixture builder. The fixture may not be able to sit in the minus 50 through 0% range for the open slot, and possibly the last slot cannot sit in the 0 through 50% range. Therefore, these offsets should be mapped to a single DMX value. Add another two DMX entries and you can copy and paste the function and feature settings. For the open slot, set the DMX value to 0 and the real world value to open, but with an offset of minus 50 through 0%. The original open entry should be remapped to an offset of 0 through 50%. The same process should be repeated for the final slot. Continue to add the range of DMX values and real world values for the spin feature and once again press build type to check your work and save your progress. The final channel of this tutorial is a strobe channel which, as you'll see from the chart, it also contains some control functions such as lamp strike and fixture reset. This is not a problem and can all be added as different functions within the same channel. 
From the DMX chart, it would appear that seven DMX entries are required, but we will also want to add an additional entry for fixture control with the feature of idle, which would typically share the same DMX value as the open position for strobe. Configure the functions and features for each entry. You will find the strobe function within the intensity tab and the lamp and fixture control functions under the control tab. As with the other channels, Assign the DMX values and the associated real-world values. Please note that real-world values do not need to be applied to the majority of control functions. Press build type for the final time, then you can open the fixture window and add the new fixture into your show and patch as normal. In the next tutorial, we will take a look at working with dotted user numbers. Thank you for watching.